So hi, Sue. Uh, very nice to be chatting to you today. And uh, the reason why we're here today is because we've uh, partnered up on a program called Ignite Selling uh, with Purpose. And the reason why that came about is because we had a conversation as COVID hit uh, around how is business going to survive during this time? You know, personally, I know that being in the events business, uh, most of the activity that I had planned was cancelled. And so, uh, you know, it affected uh, revenue, it affected a lot of other things, you know, people you employ and engage with. And I know not a, a lot of other businesses, retailers, small businesses, non-essential <laughs> item, uh, you know, a couple of businesses, all been impacted by this. And it's not just what happened during COVID, it's even what's happening after. Uh, and so that's, that's how our conversation started, I suppose. This is what, what we were talking about. Uh, but before we continue with this uh, you know, chat that we're going to have today, can you just uh, tell us a little bit about uh, yourself and your firm? So. Sure, not a problem. Well, besides being a, uh, a parent, a working mother uh, with two teenage boys uh, and also an active sports person and someone who's really passionate about life, uh, I started my business back on the 9th of January 1995, uh, really focusing on ethical and sustainable sales strategies, uh, practices and systems. So basically I help people and businesses sell better now and sustainably for the future. But of course the S word often, you know, garners a lot of fear for people. And one of my missions in life is to help people not be frightened of selling, understand that it's really helpful for them and um, that they can use selling as the vehicle to allow opportunity to flourish and people to prosper, but with all the right intentions to be of service to others. Totally agree there. I mean, I've had, um, you know, uh, comments about, oh, should you be selling during this time? Um, and I'm thinking, uh, sort of taken back by those comments because, you know, supermarkets are selling. Uh, banks are selling loans in the post. Everyone else is selling. Why is it some services are seen at, um, you know, less able to do that? Um, anyway, now, for uh, in your opinion, uh, what you've seen from when COVID started and, uh, you know, the future, what do you think the uh, biz biggest concern uh, is for business today? Okay, so I think actually touching on what you just said earlier is... Um, when things like a crisis like COVID hits, it's very natural for people's uh, whole focus, their whole mind to be looking at, you know, they're in fight and flight mode. It's like, mm -hmm. what the hell's going on? How do I cope? And then once you kind of get over the initial shock, then you want to know what the rules of the game are, which is why in our country, Australia, we're fortunate that the government, state and federal have stepped in to provide support, particularly for those businesses, you know, like yours that mm. got shut down, mm. at least mm. in the physical sense overnight. Through no fault of your own, it gets shut down. Of course, it's going to create anxiety and distress for people. So what we have to be able to do is we have to be able to remain as calm as we can and pragmatic as we can to look at, okay, what's happening now? What do I need to do now to be able to stay in business? Mm. Do I have to adapt? Do I have to do different things? And that's really hard when you're feeling anxious. So the other thing is that once you've got your head around the rules of engagement around COVID, now we have to start looking up and looking ahead. Can what I do now still flourish? If not, what do I have to do to adjust to be able to stay in business? Um, and it also comes back to the tone of messaging as well, because mm -hmm. you might be a, you might be quick off the mark. You might have gone, yep, got it all sorted, ready to go. But your clients might, in fact, mm -hmm. still be in anxiety mode. So again, you don't want to come across as tone deaf. Mm -hmm. So it's this kind of dance that we've got to play between I'm ready to go, I'm ready to pivot, I can take my events business to a digital business, and da 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 da. -da if you've got it all sorted, using you as an example. But how are my audience responding to this? So I've got to find ways to actually still give them hope without kind of hitting them in the face. Because if someone's not ready to move yet, more pressure on them to make, pay attention to you is going to have them shut down even further. So mm. you can see that we actually have really got to understand how to um, 
get our own act together, how to start moving forward, but then how to read the, t the, the, the tone and the sentiment in the market and then find ways to continue to engage and keep in touch with people. Mm. And then with COVID moving, we've now got to find ways to make sure we can move ahead and pick up either where we left off or completely adjust ourselves to the new normal because it is a new normal. So this is why um, being able to kind of almost split yourself in two, okay, I'm stressed, I'm anxious, but also I've got to now be this very discerning, pragmatic, detached, strategic kind of business person. Mm. It's not easy to pull off, let's say. Uh, definitely not. Uh, I mean, just personally, you know, when, when all that happened, just going through that and even, even thinking about, do you have the skills to, to change the way you go forward? Uh, do you have the support that you need? Um, and sometimes that support could be just a mentor or it could be, you know, physical, technical support, things you need. So there's a lot to think about. And you're right, you know, when, you, when you're going through all this, uh, the first thing is survival mode. <laughs> I need to be able to put food on the table. So, yeah. Now, um, obviously, all your workshop focus on, you know, it's about selling, selling better. But often selling has a bad reputation. Um, and marketing is sort of accepted, you know. What, 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 what do you think... Um, you know, people sell, you know, call selling marketing or marketing selling. You know, what's the difference between them? And why do we need them both to be able to move our business forward? Yes, well, well I have a science background. So I, I like having very clear definitions about things. And we call things, you know, if you're in music, you wouldn't mistake a crotchet for a quaver. I mean, they are got clear definitions, okay? So the thing is that marketing is incredibly important for business, but it actually talks to groups. It's the way you share your stories, you know, part of your, you know, it's your brand. It's all of that kind of stuff that evokes, you know, something about what you do. But selling talks to individuals. Mm -hmm. So at the end of the day, um, I may be attracted to your business by your brand, but when I actually have, when you have to help me work out how we can work together, you've got to know how to sell. And selling is where we actually find out what a client's about, what's important to them, and then we work out how we can actually help them with whatever it is that we're doing. So we then curate the right solution. Your marketing messages cannot account for every single individual person out there. Your marketing is capturing the attention of certain types of people you want to work with, but when you get up close and personal, that's when you need to know how to sell. So they have to work together. Marketing talks to group, sales talks to individuals. Actually, you're making so much sense. Because uh, most people think of, I'll do this marketing campaign and I'll sell, you know, my products. And often that doesn't translate uh, because it's so different, right? Or because you need to have a different relationship when you're actually selling than uh, when you're marketing. Um, well, I mean, unless you're an online business, which is just very transactional and someone's buying something they understand and they need it and they can just get it fine. But at the end of the day, if you're in a services business or a business that actually does interact with humans, mm -hmm. you have to know how to sell so that you help people buy what's appropriately. They go together. Selling and buying is about creating a fair exchange of value and mutual you know, prosperity between each other. And it doesn't have to be super significant. But at the end of the day, if there's a human involved or humans, mm -hmm. you have to also know how to sell, not just market. Great advice. Now, one of the uh, big issues at the moment, everyone's gone online, uh, trying to uh, bring business online wherever possible. So there's actually a, you know, see your competition out there. Uh, and, and, you know, people go, let's quickly go online, let's set up our businesses online. But it's, in some instances, it's actually backfired on them. So what are some of the tactics? Um, you know, what are some of the things we could do to, to be noticed? Um, in, in, in this environment. All right, well, this all comes back to clear strategy first. You just don't wanna go splat out there because that creates confusion. And of course, the, the last thing any of us needs is more information. 
like we are in a you know, like an ocean of information and some of it's not real and some of it's bad and some of it's good and how do I make decisions about that so we, however you go to market online face to face with a retail shop or whatever come back to what it is you actually do come back to your strategy come back to why you and then you've got to be very clear with this bell ringing with consistency around your messaging. Now that's assuming, of course, you've been able to stay in the same business or be it adapting mm -hmm. to online. Mm -hmm. If you have to shut down what you're doing and start a new business, you then have to rethink all of that about what that is. But it all comes back to the clarity of your strategy and the types of markets you want to go after. So good strategy is what you leave out. So what you want to be able to do is go after the types of people that you want to work with and continue to cut through with that message. Don't overcomplicate it, but keep it really clear. And then what will happen is they still see you, they start to see you and they go, ah, that's them, that's them. I mean, I've always advocated ethical sales practices, okay, forever. And it's funny now because with all the stuff going on, people are going, oh, yes, so I'm interested in this and they want more of it. Mm -hmm. But the people who've known me forever go, she's never strayed from that focus. Mm -hmm. So there's a consistency and an authenticity in that. Mm -hmm. And so whatever medium you use to communicate and engage with people, come back to your purpose, what you stand for, what you're there to do and how you help people. And that is how you actually build that trustworthiness, that authenticity, that empathy, and the logic of what you do. But then you've got to work out how to cut through and get above all the dross that's out there. Oh, my Lord, there's so much dross. Yeah, and uh, from what I'm hearing, what you're saying is you've got to sort of step almost back, look at your landscape, and then be just very specific, in particular in this time, because there's so much out there. Yes. Make, it makes sense, but sometimes it's hard to do. Uh, well, now, it's just, not easy for anyone to do. Yeah. It's very challenging. But yes, these are some of the key things I would strongly recommend for people. So leaning into that, you live by the philosophy of selling is everybody's business and everybody lives by selling something. And you advocate for ethical and sustainable sales strategies, which we touched on before. Um, how can we embrace our inner ethical salesperson and ignite selling with purpose? Uh, that, like we said before, people are finding it difficult to sell or it's, you know, we can probably market but not sell. How, how do we ignite that? All right, well, if we come back to the foundational premise of humans, humans are uh, social creatures, they're communal creatures, and it's actually our natural state. You know, if you watch any little child, we're naturally curious, we're actually born helpful and we're actually born for fairness, okay? And all the work we've done around sales is that we find the very best people in sales are these curious, helpful, fair-oriented people. But they also know how to get their butts out there in front of the people that need to know about them. And this is the bit that most people go, ah, I you know, really yes, struggle yes. with. So there's something else biologically people need to understand as well, is that one of the things we don't like have happening to us is being rejected. Mm -hmm. And in fact, in the tribal days, if you did something wrong, you'd be called up in front of everyone and you'd be told off. <laughs> and then, of course, you know, not only would you psychologically go, oh, I probably shouldn't do that again. Biology didn't want you to die. So what it did is also gave you this physical pain of shame and those sorts of things where you went, oh, that feels awful. So I'm not going to do that again. Because if you did it again, you'd be ejected from the tribe probably. And that would be a death sentence unless you were Bear grills or something like that. So the fear of rejection is a real physiological fear that people have. And selling sets you up every single day when you go out to engage with people to face the fear of rejection. Mm -hmm. So no wonder most people don't like selling. Besides the bad stereotypes, because we never see good news stories about selling in the press, but that's just because it's sensationalized. And those people that we talk about there are minuscule in terms of the majority of people. So what people have to learn, and you have to actually learn this, is to how to overcome psychologically that fear of rejection. And if you set yourself up well to sell and you know how to engage people effectively to spark their curiosity to want to keep talking to you, and this is the skill and craft of selling and good communication and good relationships, quite frankly, um, that when you learn how to do that, 
uh, you can you can still get disappointed if someone says no, sure, but you know that's okay because they're just not ready yet, or you stuffed up your message, or whatever it was. But when you learn to handle that, then you can actually really embrace your inner ethical salesperson and absolutely start kicking goals. It is a life skill that is vital for anyone, but we do have to learn it for the majority of us. Yeah, and I find that with a lot of um, businesses that we work with. Um, um, amazing ideas, business with impact, uh, but then, you know, to be able to have that impact, you, you've got to be able to sell your product or services. And that's where most of the, uh, I suppose, businesses that are driving by passion fail or are not successful. Uh, whereas I think it's even more important to be able to learn to sell because otherwise you're going to minimise the impact that you have across communities or the environment, whatever impact you want to have. So um, one question I want to ask you is, uh, you probably know that most businesses have had uh, sell revenues taking big dives during COVID-19. How, how can we drive up sales um, ethically and, 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 and uh, you know, and quickly? Uh, don't know if it's possible, but do you have any tips on that? Well, this is the thing. It comes back to um, obviously taking stock of what's happened, taking stock of where your customers have gone. You've got to do the analysis. We can't just react. We actually have to be able to pause and really do the analysis of what's happened to our marketplace, what's happened to our customers, what's happened to our opportunities. A, are there still viable life signs of opportunity there? Uh, then you've got to stay in touch with your customers to keep them keep them on board. Again, tone correct and all of that stuff, yeah. notwithstanding what I've said earlier. But if your business has had things fall off a cliff and you can't do anything, then you've got to think about what are the resources and talent that I currently have, be it individually or if I have a team, what do we have? How can we apply that to maybe different supply chains? Because there are supply chains that are intact. Like you said earlier, you know, the food supply chain yeah. is intact. Uh, the health supply chain is intact. There are certain areas. Can what I do now actually be adapted and applied to those supply chains? Because what I want to see are these amazing businesses with impact, socially responsible businesses, ethical supply chains, you know, these beautiful businesses that the world should actually have much more abundance of. But if you don't know how to sell and you don't know how to get that goodness out in front of the people that need to know about you, because they're already looking at someone else that may not be ideal. Mm -hmm. But if they're only looking at that type of business and not yours, you've got to take ownership of this. So mm -hmm. I want people to get over the fact that, oh, selling's unethical. No, it's not. It's your intention that's ethical or not. But you've got to know how to be sales fit to drive opportunity and credit through channel partners, uh, you know, direct to customers. You've got to do the analysis, but you've got to take ownership of the proactive nature that selling does. It's an enabler. It's a beautiful opportunity for us to get out there and really make a difference in the world. And if people won't embrace that, we'll never get the goodness of these wonderful businesses in front of the customers to help change their mind and see there's a better way of living, doing business mm. and operating. I am here for a better world, but I want people to get selling and show that out there. So you can tell I'm a bit passionate about that, Susanna. <laughs> yes, yes. And, and I agree. I, I like what you said, the intention is what's important here. You know, what is that you represent? Uh, you know, are you selling just for selling or are you selling because you've got a purpose? And also when it comes down to it, uh, you know, the very basic, we are exchanging things that we need and that, that, and that we want. So it shouldn't be that, um, that bad. You know? um, one of the things that I, I'm seeing a lot at the moment is people are giving away things, you know, away, you know, courses, products, whatever they are, maybe because they feel they're going to attract more customers doing that way. I'm not sure. But how do you feel about this? Should people be giving away things during this time or should they be charging? It's a tricky question because, again, you're wanting to attract people to your brand. You want them to have a look at it. Uh, you want to find things that you know may be interesting. So, firstly, um, giving away something uh, if you expect something in return, but don't say it, 
that creates a lot of confusion. So I like to help people know the difference between generosity and reciprocity. Mm -hmm. Generosity is giving something, expecting nothing in return. Okay. Mm -hmm. So you give it out there and that's fine. That's your choice too. Reciprocity is where you expect something to be exchanged, like trading something in return. Okay. Mm -hmm. And that's fine too. And that's what business is, but giving away something, um, and expecting it to be of value. A lot of people don't value free things and they just take advantage of them. So you've got to be discerning. Like we're doing this video and there's good stuff in this video, but we're using it to be able to help inform people to make an informed decision about whether or not they want to come and look at a particular program that we've got. We're very clear about those intentions. Mm -hmm. All right. So that's their choice. And it's our choice to give this. If we look at this, really pragmatically. Mm -hmm. So I don't think people should not confuse giving away something and then hoping people read your mind thinking that you'll come, that they'll come back and give you something in return. Just say it. Mm -hmm. This is what I want to do. I want to give you some idea of what you might be getting yourselves into when you come and do something with us. Here it is, but here's the program to please, you know, sign up, be explicit. Mm -hmm. Don't make people guess. Um, and also I wouldn't give away things that I, I, I really don't like um, a lot of the marketing strategies that are out there. They're actually on the fringe. They're, they're getting into that unethical zone where they, they, they have these kind of come to this free thing and you're going to get $5,000 worth of value for $200. I'm sorry, but that's rubbish. Mm -hmm. It's complete rubbish and they're spinning people and they're selling hope to the hopeless. And I don't like that either. Just I've, play a straight bat, be clear. We're being generous. Here's something here. Um, by all means, if you want to come and do something paid with us, here it is over here. Mm. Done. Yeah, I mean, it's I, refreshing to be candid and clear. I agree. I mean, I've seen a lot of that popping up at the moment, you know, $20,000 worth of oh. goods for, you know, $2,000. How can it be possible? <laughs> well, exactly. So what's the real, so what's exactly, what's the real cost of that? Because then that says a lie, which is the same with discounting. Oh, mm. you get it. Volume discounting is fine. But if you're going to offer discounting and oh, we, I mean, some people are doing COVID pricing, okay, that's being generous, but be clear that it's COVID pricing for a period of time. We want to help you through, but don't pretend that if it's $5,000, but you can get it for a hundred dollars because then people go, well, what's the real price then? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. It's lying. And, and it could also affect your business further down the track. I think you know, people are not going to believe that, uh, you know, you're worth whatever you're worth. So, yeah. So don't sell by desperation is what mm. I'm saying. That's, that's mm. really important. All right. So now I just want to go straight into the, uh, this program. You have developed a remote sale program, uh, specifically designed to address the business uh, impact of COVID-19 and it's called Ignite Selling with Purpose. Can you tell us a bit more about this program? This is the collaboration that will come up and I will share uh, the website as we speak. So you can just explain what the program is and give us a bit more info about when uh, that will happen yes. and how it goes. Yeah. Okay. So um, we have combined two things together. We've combined four live webinars. The first one starting on the 15th of June. Um, and we're going to be actually getting people to come together to talk about their, uh, we're going to talk about the business and we're going to talk about selling sustainably in that first webinar. We then have uh, three more webinars over a two week period. It'll be a Friday, Monday, Friday. And what we're wanting people to do is come and work on their business during those four webinars, but you'll be supported by access to an online program which has a whole lot of tools and resources, podcasts and templates for people to actually go and do the analysis on their business. So Suzanne is showing here the four key topics we're covering in the live webinars. So we're going to be looking at what do I need to do to stay in business in the second webinar, getting notice in a sea of competition in the third, and then building your database and the power of prospecting. But underpinning all of that is a, is a seven online topics that take us into a lot more detail about what you can actually do to work on your business. As I said, there are going to be templates and tools to work on, information that you can actually play with to actually stick your business through a filter and then come back 
better informed for each of the sessions going on. So we would call this a blended program. It's a remote program with live webinars and online content, but you get access to the online content for eight weeks. So even when the webinars finish, which we will record by the way, and we'll make them available in an exclusive private setting for you to go and access and review later, you'll be able to actually work on your business. If you need extra support outside of that, you can actually come and speak to me. That's obviously a, like a coaching fee service for you, but we're hoping that in the four live webinars and the online program, it will give you enough content to really put your business through those filters to help you come out the other end and keep selling better during and beyond COVID. Thank you. Look, I, I think uh, this time in particular is it's important to invest in yourself or your business to see how you can do things differently. Whether it's you know doing better marketing, uh, doing better events online. So investing in yourself and your business right now will probably determine how you're going to do well or how well you're going to do in the future. So I think, I mean, what we're offering here is a you know, four weeks program with you. <laughs> You've got so much experience. Uh, even just chatting to you, I'm learning so much. Starting from the 16th of June, yes. uh, 9.30 to 10.30 in the morning. So nice and early, get it out of the way. Uh, and the cost is two ninety five for all four. So it's just... $73.75 a workshop, which is hardly... Well, it's, but it's also all the online content and tools and, all and the templates online. you can keep and you can keep reusing over and over and over again. So it's not just the live, four live webinars, it's all the online tools and resources that people have in there, like how to sell remotely. There's a whole lot of content, how to okay. set yourself up to sell remotely, for example. Uh, there's ways of looking at different markets and analysis and stuff. So it's, yeah, it's the four live webinars plus seven loaded up topics full of lots of rich content, podcasts, all sorts of, you know, videos, all sorts of things to help people sell better. Well, look, uh, we're going to finish up now, but thank you so much. I can't wait to start. I'll be sitting in all those workshops <laughs> to uh, learn something and, um, and thank you. My, my pleasure, Susanna. Looking forward to meeting people there and uh, hope we get a lot of people coming along so that we can really take great businesses out to the world and uh, make a difference. So thank you. Let's do it. Okay. okay. Bye. 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 <laughs>